Good afternoon. We bring you greetings from Real Inspiration Ministries. We are the only known as Deacon Nation. This is Deacon Trey. I am Deacon Keyshawn. This is Deacon Jennifer, and this is Deacon Ray Andre. We want you to come see our loving, smiling faces at 659 Larkin Street, located in Atlanta. We don't know what you're looking at, but I just came to say, Happy, Happy Easter, Easter Day! Easter. <laughs> On behalf of our wonderful and luxurious pastor, Bishop Elect, Saint E. Williams. Yay! First Lady Regina Williams. Yay! And the entire Real Inspiration Ministry family, we welcome you here. So here we are to worship. Here we are to Just for who you are in our lives, Jesus. Just for everything that you've done for us, Jesus. Because how many of you know that the future of the black church depends on our ability to love people unconditionally? Amen. Amen. And if we don't get that right, we may not see a black church. I'm being bold and I'm going to say it. Your favorite church memory would go back to about 11 years of age when I was first baptized. Favorite church memory um, is actually we was at our old church at 1164. Oh, my favorite church memory. Oh, I don't know if I have one. I think my favorite church memory is in my hometown church, church I grew up in, my family church. Um, I was in Sunday school. They went around the school, the class, and said, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I remember this had to be age-wise, probably I was about nine. And uh, when Miss Dylan was her name, Miss Dylan came to me. She, I said, I want to be a pastor and a professor. My favorite church memory is when I was probably about 16. One of the renowned gospel music personality said that I was going to be a star. The first time I went to New Birth Church in 2002. My favorite memory of, of going to church was uh, when we would have the gospel explosions. It's hard to know that the battle is not yours. It's the Lord in the key of C, musician. For this battle is not yours. It's, 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 it's the Lord. It's the Lord. I decided to do a youth choir. At this time, I wanted to do my own because I got a little bit of, you know, experience in the industry. I had a little single out. So I wanted to do a choir at my church. We decided that we were gonna hold auditions at the church. And in the middle of that audition, the first lady pulled me and she said to me, she said, either you're gonna be gay and go to hell, or you're gonna be straight and serve God that tore my world apart, tore my world apart. And I couldn't even continue with my audition. You know, I, try, I tried, tried to suck it up and, you know, be strong, but um, I couldn't hold it together. You know, I had to cut the audition and I, that just killed that dream and I stopped, you know, and uh, that's what made me run away from the church. Um, and I told my mom about it, and my mom, of course, you know what moms do. They go and defend their babies. Uh, you, you know this, that, well, you don't do that. And, but um, it didn't do anything for the hurt, you know, because after which, the pastor and wife, they prayed for me. But it wasn't anything done about the behavior and how it was handled. So that, that took me away from the church. So fast and back forward to coming back home from Albany, I wondered where was I gonna go and worship God? Cause I can't go back to these people. These people don't love me like they say they do. 
So we are now at 2411 C Memorial Drive. And this was the first official building that REM held uh, once we left the hotel. Uh, this was the first location that we had service in. Um, this building is special to us uh, because before then we were kind of uh, just migrating. We had just left Macon, Georgia, and we were having services there. We were doing a Bible study in Macon, and we were uh, having Sunday service in Macon, and we were doing a lot of outreach in Macon. And what happened was some of the community uh, became very disgruntled there that we were having an inclusive church uh, that included people from the LGBTQ community. Uh, and so pretty much people's jobs started being threatened. Uh, they were threatening to chain, padlock our doors. We even had people that stood in front of our doors and were trying to prevent us from going in. And so I had a conversation with my bishop, which is Bishop Yvette Flunder of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries. And she said, your ministry needs to be in Atlanta. It's time for you to come up the road. My best friend, Linnell, she's a musician. She told me about REM, real inspiration. And she was saying, this church is a small church, you know, it's a firming church and uh, they small, they just starting out, you know, and I want you to come. But I went to REM and we were in the storefront right off of Memorial Drive. And when I tell you, nothing but love, nothing but love, and I prayed about it. And God told me that's where I was supposed to be. And from that moment on, uh, I started to learn about how God loves us in spite of, and that God didn't create us to hate us. And, and, and the true meaning of, he knew my story before I was in my mama's womb, that started to be the reality for me. And I started to see God as a caring God. Um, I believe we were here from 2011 to 2017. Uh, there's some great memories and there's some, some not so great memories. Um, what I remember most about this location was this was the first location we actually had to uh, sign a lease uh, and, and had a board. They wanted like more than one signature. So we had to hurry up and form like a real board. Uh, every Wednesday night after Bible study, we would also have free HIV testing and people could stay and get their status. And, and we also had counseling on deck. You know, if someone got a, um, a positive test or just wanted uh, counseling before they took the test. So this was important in our uh, growth. to your spirit, God. Whatever, oh God, someone is seeking on today, God, because they showed up and we are here, God, it shall be done in Jesus' name, God. Check CC mic for me, too. Three. I do thank y'all for coming out here. This is this is my queen. She is my everything. I promise you. Aside from God, she's the breath that I breathe. I promise you. And I took her home, honey. Cause she's brilliant, she's smart, she's good looking. It took a minute for her to get me. It took a minute for her to get me. And I, I will admit, she has the gift of gab. She does. But she means every word of it. 
She had to give the gas, y'all. That's how she got me. Amen. And I love her dearly. She wanted a musical. She said, you don't have to invite nobody from out of town. I just want wild and a few people from Atlanta. And um, I just thank y'all for coming. And I love you, babe. She's my nurse. I was sick. Normally, I take care of her. But I was sick this time. And I'm telling you, for six weeks, she has taken care of me. She has taken care of me and nursed me back to health. So I love her. And if you don't love her and you disrespect her, then you got to deal with me. You have to deal with me. You cannot disrespect her and not come through me, honey. I'm from the Carolinas, and I don't fight. But I love y'all. Amen, amen. Let's celebrate First Lady Regina. Amen. I just want to say I have had a wonderful, wonderful time today to pastor this church for almost 15 years, I believe. And, and, and I couldn't have asked for a better congregation. It wasn't always easy. Amen, somebody. You know, sometimes we can be a different people, a difficult people, Tiki. But, but God has blessed us, and, and I couldn't have asked for a better congregation in all of Atlanta. You are the best people in the world to me. God bless you all. I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you so much. When I came to the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, uh, my church was only a year old. What TFAM provided for me was a sense of scaffolding. Uh, I will never forget when Bishop Flunder uh, said to me, uh, she said, well, your church is in its infancy. And she said, you don't expect infants to do things that adults do. And so she said, so we're going to make sure that we stick in there and hang in there with you through your infancy and as you grow. And so I look at that as scaffolding, you know, and, and at the right time, uh, she was able to remove pieces and parts of the scaffold. Uh, but she was really, she hung in there with me and TFAM was a great support. We can grow, we can expand. And I think that RIM is a powerful, powerful example of that. In its early years, there were rough places. I remember times when Bishop Alexonia called me flat out, told me she was done, finished, this is it. We're closing in a minute and a half and Spirit would visit her. She'd come back, it would still be rim, but the letters would mean something different. She had had a, a, a reformation, things shifted and changes. And finally, I could begin to truly see the depth of her yes, because the depth of the success of that church was very much contingent upon the depth of her yes. She and Regina already had a house following. You know, they already were known in community. They already were a place where people went when they needed to be parented and they weren't parented in other places and spaces. But now, it was a spiritual reality. It needed to have added to it the wherewithal to prepare people to believe that God did call them. We need churches like RIM because RIM gives us an opportunity to be free to worship. I don't have to hide behind a woman. Another woman doesn't have to hide behind a man. We can be free to worship. We have the ice, uh, the ice cups over here on the side. It's hot, y'all. Uh, you can also take some pride photos in the back for the Eastern Nation. I feel like I'm missing the thing. I am a man of trans experience. As far as my family is concerned, but when I decided to transition, that was the last straw, as they put it, and it was a complete abomination. I had a very hard time dealing with the fact that they disowned me. I think the words I used to always say is, how in the world 
can a woman carry a child for nine months and let it go? My entire life, I swore against church, especially after going through everything that I went through with being ostracized from the family and Jehovah Witnesses. And I don't know what changed one day. Something happened. I think it was Bishop uh, because I've always felt an attachment to Bishop Sonia. It was in a sense to where I felt like God connected me to her. It was almost like I felt like I had to protect her. Are we not in a similar position as Nehemiah and the Jews? We are living in a land where the walls of justice, financial stability, democracy, and simple human compassion has been torn down. Let's remember that together with all men and all women, with the might of God, we can shake this world and create a change. We have been looking for a different spaces to be able to worship in. We've narrowed it down. We think we have somewhere. Uh, we are so thankful and grateful for the time that we were here in this space. Amen. And God certainly moved here. I think it's been five years. Amen. So this actually, um, and we won't see each other for a month. Amen. We won't see each other for a month after this. I attended a church in Decatur. I was a youth director there and very involved in the church and very close to the pastor. And when I revealed uh, that I was same gender loving, I never hid it. I just didn't think it was anything that I needed to discuss. You know, I was young, maybe about 21. I was outcast. Well, first off, it was painful, but it was something that needed to happen I left the church. I just left the church. I just decided the church was not a place for me. Now, this was a conundrum for me because I also knew from a child that I was called to, to minister. I was called to preach the gospel. I knew who I was from a child. I mean, I left the church for 10 years. Yeah, left the church for 10 years. I missed the church. This is still painful. And I've been pastoring for almost 20 years now. And this is still painful for me to have to leave your church. And what I missed most was the aisle of the church, the church aisle. And what I come to realize is that other same gender loving people miss the aisle of the church, the aisles, you know. Um, how sacred it is to, to walk up an aisle and be baptized or to come up that aisle and say, I want to give my life to Christ or to watch your family members that you love walk up the aisle in united holy matrimony or to watch a loved one's casket be enrolled up the aisle, you know, and, and say your final goodbye. And so to, to be rejected from the place that is the glue of your community. There, that pain is as deep as losing a close loved one, if not deeper. But as I said, I'm so glad that I had that experience because I learned what love and acceptance was. I learned that Jesus died for everyone for the whosoever. I still desire the fellowship as the African-American church. I still desire us to just be of one faith, you know, one body, one <laughs> baptism. And I'm sure many of you know that by now, um, we, the leaders did a fantastic job, fantastic job of scouting the land and finding a location um, and making um, 
uh, referrals of different places that we could go and look and possibly call home, and we narrowed it down uh, to the City of Lights, and we will begin to post pictures. We will send pictures in your uh, email of the, the building that we're going in. Um, it, it's a beautiful space. It seats about 300 people. Um, and so we are just excited to be going there. Our first service there will be uh, the first Sunday in August. So everything is in here. So this is technically rim, <laughs> rim in a nutshell. Um, and, and with having this storage space and having our own space at one point in time, it's like, it just motivates me to finally get us to our final church home to, cause I don't want to see rim in a condensed space like this. I, that's, that's not my rim, <laughs> you know? So it just motivates me to push, sow the seeds, do what we need to do to grow the ministry, to get our final church home. I'm more excited about seeing the people and being able to fellowship um, with us going through the pandemic. We haven't been able to fellowship like we have in the past, but for everyone to be comfortable, to fellowship, don't have to worry about the air, don't have to worry about anything, just coming here, sending our praises up to God, sending our worship up to God. I'm just excited about seeing the people coming in, for them to be excited about the new space, to be excited about the musical, to be excited about this next level of real. So that's what I'm excited about. Well, I'm, I'm very excited about the move. I feel like uh, God is expanding our ministry is something that we've been praying for. We definitely felt that we needed a comfortable environment for people to feel free and liberated enough to worship in. Um, so I'm very excited. And I think the membership is very excited as well. I believe this is gonna add a new energy uh, to our movement. I believe that uh, people will be more uh, compelled to come and worship with us now that we have air that works. Uh, and I just thought it was time for us to move into a new space, a new territory. God is certainly enlarging our territory. Well, I can't really say there's been any challenges to the move. Our uh, leadership team did an excellent job in orchestrating the entire move. They did a wonderful job in orchestrating the whole move from the old space into the storage and getting things moved here into this space. I kind of left it in their hands and and they far exceeded all of my expectations. This, this place actually feels like home. Um, not saying that where we were didn't feel like home, but... But it was, every, it's just somebody else's place, so it's different. <laughs> and they can't talk to you or me. People think that we don't know who Jesus is, and we do. The stuff some of us have been through, to be continue to be whole and a believer and love the next human being, oh yeah, we know who Jesus is in our lives. I know who Jesus is in my life because when Jesus revealed my sexuality to me, I was a police officer carrying a 357 Magnum. And because of my church teaching, who I'm coming, who I was becoming to know who I was sexually was all wrong. And on the road to accepting Nadine, for whom God has you know, shown me to be, there were nights of playing with the 357 Magnum. I was with no bullets, <laughs> okay? And I would sit in my apartment. I lived alone. I would sit in my apartment, in the living room, on the floor, in my apartment, and I would spin that cylinder on that 357 Magnum, and I would say, God, I know that you have something better for me. That was probably the only thing 
that saved my life, that stopped me from taking my life. I was 24, so it's been almost 40 years. And I remember it as clear as day, is I am constantly aware that there are LGBTQ people coming up behind me who have experienced church hurt. We have to have a new definition for what is right and what is wrong, what I call a prima facie uh, duty to do no harm. So I said, well, that's a sin. I said, the question that you have to ask about this is, is this harmful? Because you can be completely heterosexually married to the person that you chose and be a beast financially, intimately, spiritually, and you are still a beast. It does not matter that you have covered all the bases that the church said that you needed to cover, had a wedding in white and everything, okay? And you're still a monster. What permits you to continue to be a monster is that there are no, no one embraces first face, the prima facie duty to do no harm. Not keep the rules, but do no harm. And if you do no harm, whatever of the rules really are healthy and helpful, they will remain. Is that reflection? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to try to get in by the sink. Who, who do you want to talk to? Just get your right there. Yeah, it's all Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all. Your family to me, and you're always welcome in our house. See, I thank y'all so much. It was hard on our praise team, y'all, but the songs that were sung today, I requested those songs, and they made it possible. Yeah. And I love y'all. Thank you. But I definitely know the spirit of God is here, and I feel confident that we made the right decision. Uh, in relocating to this space. I know now after this service, more than I knew before, that God certainly spoke to us and shifted us in this direction. Now, mind you, my take on Beyonce's song is simply about a church girl that has been suppressing her natural feelings uh -huh. because of religiosity and biblical teaching, sensual, sexual, and spiritual. And they got an urge to combine their sensuality, sexuality, and spirituality. Come on, y'all, get comfortable with it. So I don't make any apologies for that. I have no conviction uh, concerning that. Because sexuality is holiness. Somebody say that. Sexuality is holiness. Sure is. God, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That was the only requirement. The first time preaching in this location, how did I feel? Uh, it was liberating. Of course, I felt, honestly, I felt a little bit... Um, 
out of place. It took a second for me to get adjusted and get into it. I'm just a creature of habit and I'm a creature of routine. Uh, so I did have to get used to it, but it was just very liberating to watch the people and to see uh, their faces and to just really feel that they were getting free um, from the word and from the message and that, that something was said that would help them on their way. So it felt great, it really felt great. Jesus affirmed those individuals that the church threw away. What if the people that we traditionally didn't throw, what if we didn't throw them away? What if we really embraced them? The same way that we asked them to come and sit in the front pew when they want to join the church. What if we really took them the way that they really are? One of the reasons that we're here tonight is to recognize distinguished leaders from around the state of Georgia, specifically in the city of Atlanta and the region, for the work that you do. So that's why we're gathered here tonight, to be very, very clear about that. And I've asked a few friends and colleagues to join me in honoring you and the work that you do. From the pulpit, to the courtroom, to the boardroom, we thank you, we salute you, and we honor you tonight. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I can shout about it because I know every 14, every one of the days, every hour, every minute, every second of the 14 years. I was there. I was there when they tried to chain the doors and make it because we weren't a affirming church. I was there when the pastors got together and had a meeting and making and said that they weren't going to allow us to stay in that city. I was there. I was there when we started in the hotel up here in Atlanta and we got put out. I was there. Hallelujah. And we didn't get put out because we couldn't pay. We got put out because of who we were. I was there. I was there when we had a church split, when half the membership decided they was going to go start their own church. Hallelujah. 
And they had to go start their own because they damn sure weren't going to take mine. Hallelujah! My greatest hope for the black church is that we would lean into our becoming. The church is shifting and changing with or without us. It's on autopilot. Ain't nothing can stop it. It's just as sure as we sitting here. I'm hoping that the black church can lean into it in a way that allows us to join in the celebration of our becoming and not the lamentation of our becoming, right? So for me, my dream is that we would find a way. We've got a rich history of being on the cutting edge of so much, but I think we also have a rich or dark history about being behind the times on so much. If we would lean into it, the God who preserved this institution on slave ships, right? We brought our faith with us. That same God would guide us safely to where our what's next is. But we gotta lean into it. I do believe that the future of the African-American church as we know it is gonna depend upon their ability to, to love and accept people of, of all walks of life. Um, because these younger generations, they're fluid. They get it. I believe that we have to understand that we are now a part of a reformation that is active. We're simply called for this time to make this shift. This is our time. We were born for this and born strategically in this time for this time. Bishop Sonia. Williams. Thank you again for your hand of friendship for many years. Thank you for being someone that I can confide in. We share my darkest moments with. So, greetings to you, First Lady. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, on behalf of the mayor of the city of Atlanta, members of the Atlanta City Council, on behalf of the citizens of Atlanta and the state of Georgia, hereby recognize Bishop elect Sonia Williams for her leadership for her advocacy on this 16th day of October, 2022. We love you, we salute you, and happy anniversary. <laughs> and what you've seen in 14 years ain't even worthy to be compared to what you will see. Say greater works shall you do. No, no, I understand that there are two connotations of greater. It could be greater in quality and greater in quantity, but tell me, Tell me, has God done everything God was going to do? I want you to lead with love yes. and humility yes. and be extenders of grace yes. and be keepers of peace. Yes. Amen. Praise Lord. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray. I myself will be a living. dangers we have seen, but God has delivered us from them all, and we continue to fight on together. We have history together. We have experience together. Hallelujah. God has called us for such a time as this. We walk in victory that settles us. are victorious. Yes. You're not victims. Come on, somebody. 
Hallelujah. Every negative thing that life has ever tried to tell you, you need to exchange that right now in this faith. Exchange that for the truth of God and the promises of God. Exchange it right now. Get to know who God says you are. Define yourself by who your creator says you are. Hallelujah.